Hi everyone, uh, as you know I've been working on a few I've got, uh, sort of Irish style uh, flies, I'll just give it a wee bit so you can see these. This is just some of the, the set I'm putting, putting together. This is one card, I'm, I'm onto my second card now. Uh, so these are the type of flies if you go to Ireland, um, especially when mayfly and such are coming off as well. They're very popular styles of wets. And uh, I mean, there's endless patterns to one. So over the years, I've tied uh, thirty years or more. I've tied these sort of style of flies. Uh, still enjoy tying them. Really, if you can tie an Irish style wet fly, practically tie anything, because uh, they can be quite testing, <laughs> to say the least. Now, one of the better known patterns is the the dabbler. Now. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to zoom in back in, sorry. And then we tie a Peter Ross or a pearly Peter Ross dabbler. Now, uh, one of the videos I mentioned about bronze mallard feathers, about there's ones that's like, for instance, it's not got a lot of colour. So, what I would do, uh, there's the markings here, this is from the same area as the bronze mallard, but just doesn't have a good mark on it. So, at times I would dye it, I do dye it. I don't throw them away, obviously. So this one's dyed cinnamon, but I also use them, uh, and the the lighter coloured ones, especially on the the Peter Ross or the Pearly or just the silver version, you can tie them both. Uh, so maybe tying one and just using a single feather. That was another question. Okay, I did mention that I did used to just tie with a single feather. Uh, there was a, there's lots of ways to tie. I mean, dabblers over the years I've tied them many ways. Uh, basically they do, once you start to fish them, they have a nice shape, you have a lovely shape, uh, is what you're trying to get. And every feather, every fly can be slightly different depending on the feather. Uh, you, see, you just go, you go with the flow as they say. Now hook choice is up to yourself, this is a full and mill. This one's a competition heavyweight, size 10. Uh, thread I'm going to be using, in this case this is black uni. I'm just going to start at the head, and I have waxed it. I'm just going to run it on the way down, put a layer of thread on the shank to the bend of the hook, or to the point basically you're in line with the barb. Now, with this this feather, this is the feather I'm going to be using. It's a single feather from one side. You could use the right and the left, but I'm just going to use the whole feather. This is the original way I used to tie, uh, and it's probably one of the easiest and the best, uh, I think, but there's, you can tie dabbles to suit yourself. And they can be as light or as heavy or they could be in cloak style. This is a kind of mix of both. So what I'm going to do here is the first part is the softest fibre down here. The first thing I do is I bring it out, as you can see I'm bringing it down towards the point here, or the end of the stem of the feather. What I'm trying to do is line up the ends. Once I've lined up the ends, now this is about three quarters of an inch, and with that's going to be my the cloak. This is going to be the wing, so I'm going to bring that out for the wing. Maybe not just as much as that, but there you go. Again, much the same size. So I'm going to again line up the ends, tail that off, set it on my desk. I'm going to use up these fibers at the tail for the tail. Sorry, because they do separate really well. Now there is a problem. There's a couple of broken ends in the middle here. That's the best, the easiest way to do it is to just cut them out, uh, take them away because I don't want broken ends. There's one more there. Now I want a good half dozen more fibres for the tail. So well, again what I'm going to do is bring them out, line up the ends. You can see they're lined up here so I'm going to hold what I want tear it away. This is for my tail. Tail length, usually about the hook length, that goes over the back. And this size, on dabblers, that's what I normally do. So a couple of turns, just to look, sit the fibre on the top, that's fine. Trim at the length of the body, which is there. Now I've got a silver wire to protect the body. And hold the hackle, when you catch this on. Now the first thing I'm going to do is just basically secure these in. Now in this fly you could use red thread, 
as much as uh, you could use black, but I stick to black. They work my way back down. They have the Italian. Now it could be Pearl, or in this case, Opal Mirage. This is a large. It's just a large covers quicker. So I'm seeing the cast this on the way down now. The body is basically uh, being the Peter Ross has a red sort of thorax area. So I'm just going to tie this on the way down, right towards the tail. Let's check where I am, it's fine. Come back up. So you're looking, it's just getting a measure on this. Uh, slightly by halfway, so we've got our Pearl, or our Opal Mirage, so it's about rolling up. We can slightly overlap the turns as we wind. Just to slightly thicken it, get to this point, then we can secure it in. Just trim it. I have to wax my thread here, make sure there's plenty of grip. Just tidy that area up. Now I'm using a mix. This is this is seals for this one here. Now this is actually a flame, as they call it. It's kind of hot orange red tight blend. So if you've got a hot orange uh, seals for, mix it with a wee tiny bit of red and that will give you this kind of flame colour or you can dye it flame which should be hot orange with a wee touch of red uh, dye. So we just lightly dub this on We then form. Now it can be a thin thorax or, or quite heavy, it's up to yourself because if you want to brush it out you maybe have to add a wee bit more. Now because we've got a body hackle, you've got to make sure you've got, you've got room for your materials to draw back. So there's a good, there's one, two, but just about three mil there. Tighten my vice up a wee bit and have a wee bit slack. Yeah. Now for the, the hackle, I'm using this as a badger saddle I've got. This is it's an old Met saddle I have, but it's just a nice white badger. So you want that. This white colour goes with it. Now, Peter Ross, or this style, uh, it gives the impression of a small fry. So what I'm going to do is I turn at the top, and then I'm going to work my way down. To this point here, and then I'm going to bring around my wire, deck the back, and then obviously catch in my hackle. Nice and tight, wind up. Get to this point here, just stroke back the fibres. I usually roll my fingers through the, the body and draw back these fibres. Straight up with the wire, 90 degree bend into the wire, which then locks in your, your rib. Make sure this is secure. Bend and break away your wire. And you come in with my scissors, nip out. The hackle. So we have but earlier on we, we take out, well we removed, this is the bottom part of the feather, obviously this is the top, so I'm going to use the bottom, I use that as a, like a cloak as they call it. So what I do is obviously make, make sure you wax your thread, the thread right up at the, the hackle. Oops. There. And then we want to basically, you can actually roll it round or fold it round. I'll just show you. So what you're looking for is just to the back of the hook, not too long. So we come round, just folding the fibre round. This is like a loose turn of thread in the way. Come round and encourage that with one, two, three, four. You can see how it's kind of wrapped round it. But when you pull it away or lift it out, Gives you that kind of cloak effect, or a hackle really, in a way. And then we trim this away if we're happy. Now you've got to be, be careful, mate. If you wax your thread, there's less chance of it unravelling. Then we can tidy this up. See how it's sitting. Well, it looks fine. I mean, you can stop at that. That's a good enough lie in itself. Away, so we've got the next part. Now, as you can see, I'm encouraging the tips to line up. 
There's a couple of broken ends here, I see, but I'm just going to tie them in, it'll be fine. So, we're looking for a wing length. You're looking around the tail length for the wing, just to balance it. So, this is about three quarters an inch wide or so. So, we put that in the centre of the hook, in the centre of that, so we fold it with our fingers. Come over a pinch and loop to and two or three turns. See how it's going to sit. That's fine. Then we can trim this away. Even more wax now. What I like to do is bring the thread to the eye. So we stretch the thread towards the eye and then we build up from the eye into these cut ends. Now what that's basically doing is slightly folding these fibres back and tucking them back with each turn. Your thread turns are building up like a step and pushing up. Makes it easier to get them to sit right. See what this is like, looking like. I see every fly is practically different because every every heart fibre or every sorry feather you pick up is, will have a slightly lighter or slightly darker or a fibre slightly thinner. Now you, this is optional. You can put jungle cork on it. Now I do. I try and find. I select all the split jungle cork. There's one here. Just trying to separate it from the other feathers. Now you can see how so when you see this feather it is it's split. There's a wee break in the top, but these are ideal for using up. So I'm gonna encourage them to split a wee bit further down. I'm gonna draw back these fibres. And then have a wee quick look, see what it's like. Splits uneven a wee bit sometimes, so what I like to do is try and level it up. So the side it's just a wee bit long. I'm just going to take it out. I don't know if you can see it there, but then it's there. So both sides are the same size. Just going to offer it to the side or the top. Sorry, so I'm going to basically fold it down couple of turns. Now we can have it sitting alongside like the way it is like this, which I'm quite happy with. Both are sitting even. Wax my thread. Now this will cause a wee bit of bulk in your head by doing this, but you'll have a better fly, it'll last a wee bit longer. Uh, just to fold it back and then bulge your thread up again from the front. Before you get to the top, just come in, there's the, the end there, I'm just going to trim this away. Tidy the head area up. Just take your time, place the thread turns. Once you're happy, always keep the thread tight. But finish. Again, I'm forming a shape with the head with the thread. Trim. See what they like. As long as you have a nice shape profile, uh, that's what you're looking for. Once this is in the water, you get a lovely teardrop shape. And then what you want to do is just varnish. Touch the head all the way around and there, varnish it, give it a couple of coats. So you get a nice bright head. All I'm doing is tapping the head as I'll rotate the vise. Just allowing the varnish to, to catch. There we are. And that's a pearly Peter Ross uh, dabbler. So tied with a single feather, using all the elements tip right down to, from the set bottom of the feather to the top. Just to get some sort of shape and using them up. As I say, these are feathers normally I would basically throw away, uh, well not, I, would, I don't throw anything away, but, they, but basically if you've got like, these are bronze mallard feathers but with little colour, so they either die or you can tie lighter coloured flies with it. So there we are, and that's, uh, as I say, the pearly Peter Ross.